Hello everyone, my name is Karan. I am passionate about systems engineering and reliability. I work at Walmart where I am responsible for developing traffic platforms. Today we are going to go through an overview of LEAF. LEAF stands for Lightweight eBPF Application Foundation. We acronym it as LEAF because it's based on eBPF and is extremely lightweight. Let's go through what we plan to cover today. We will start with a brief introduction to eBPF and LEAF, followed by an overview of the LEAF platform and eBPF solutions. We would then like to talk about our open sourcing plans and walk you through a demo. eBPF runs as a mini VM inside the kernel. It essentially provides a sandbox environment to insert code into the running kernel. Now let's understand this in a little bit more detail. The Linux kernel is fundamentally event-driven. Applications that are running in user space make system calls to the kernel. A couple of examples of system calls include reading and writing from disk, connecting to applications, reading from sockets. We also have hardware devices like network cards, disks, USBs. Now these hardware devices send interrupts to tell the kernel that certain data is ready to process. Example, when a packet arrives at the NIC or when the data is available for reading on the disk. The kernel, which you see in the middle, handles all these events. In cases where we would like to extend the kernel's functionality, the traditional approach has been to build your own custom kernel by writing modules or submit a patch upstream and wait for the next kernel release. eBPF presents a new model which allows us to extend the kernel functionality through simple programs. These programs can be associated with desired kernel events so they are executed whenever the event happens. For example, we can run an eBPF program when a packet arrives at the NIC or when an application makes a system call to the kernel. So in a way, eBPF programs are to kernel what plugins are to proxy or web servers. eBPF has out-of-the-box integrations with low-level network hooks such as XTP, TC, as well as probing mechanisms such as K-probes, U-probes, and trace points. Now, eBPF also provides a safe and secure way to write efficient eBPF programs and run them in the kernel. The verification step ensures that the eBPF program is safe to run. It validates that the program meets several conditions. For example, it makes sure that the program does not crash and that it always runs to completion without sitting in infinite loops, for example. The just-in-time compilation step translates the generic bytecode of the program into machine-specific instruction set to optimize execution speed of the program. This, in other words, makes eBPF programs run as efficiently as natively compiled kernel code. The popularity of eBPF is rapidly growing. There are more and more eBPF programs being written to solve a wide variety of problems. Several startups are building technologies around eBPF and large technology companies like Facebook, Netflix, Microsoft are embracing eBPF to solve large-scale problems. At Walmart, we too are embracing eBPF and using it to solve similar problems. A challenge we faced when first adopting eBPF was how to manage and orchestrate multiple eBPF programs on a large scale. We require to run numerous eBPF programs on a given node, and we have thousands of nodes across many DCs in a hybrid cloud environment using multiple cloud providers. Due to the lack of an enterprise-ready solution, we decided to develop our own platform. Now, LEAF provides complete lifecycle management of eBPF programs with the help of an advanced control plane that has been written in Go. This control plane orchestrates and composes independent eBPF programs across our infrastructure to solve crucial business problems. As we proceed further, you will hear me use the word kernel functions interchangeably with eBPF programs. 
we refer eBPF programs as kernel functions as they allow us to extend the kernel functionality. Coming back to our control plane, our control plane consists of two major components that work together to orchestrate kernel functions. The first one is deployment APIs, which a user calls to generate configuration data. The configuration data includes which kernel functions will run, their execution order, and the configuration arguments for each kernel function. The second one is the leaf daemon, which runs on each node. It reads the configuration data and manages the execution and monitoring of kernel functions running on that node according to the data that's available. In this way, we have simple APIs that allow users to add, remove, and reorder kernel functions on the fly. And these APIs sit on top of a distributed model to manage and configure kernel functions on a per node basis. Outside of the control plane, we have developed many eBPF based kernel functions that help us replace proprietary applications and hardware with blazing fast eBPF code. We do have a section later that provides more details about this. Together, the control plane and the eBPF kernel functions provide kernel function as a service. In the next slide, we'll try and understand how this kernel function as a service model works. Now, as you can see on the top right corner of the diagram, eBPF programs can be community developed, third party vendor ones, or the ones that the Walmart Leaf team has developed. We have a Leaf build engine, which pulls the kernel functions, compiles them, and pushes the bytecode to an artifact management solution. Now, when a user wants to deploy a kernel function, he can call a LeafD API to provide configuration data. Once LeafD reads this new config, it orchestrates the kernel function on that Linux host as per the defined parameters. If the user gives a set of kernel functions, then leafd can orchestrate all of them in the same sequence that the user wanted. Executing kernel functions in a sequence is called chaining, and it is one of the most critical operations that leaf can perform as a platform. This whole workflow is in line with the build once deploy everywhere philosophy, wherein we could, or wherein we would build the deployment package once for any environment, which in this case would translate to multiple kernel versions and set configuration at deploy time. While I walked you through an example of a new kernel function deployment, all the operations that we discussed in the previous slide can be triggered through APIs. In the next section, we will take a closer look at the eBPF kernel function ecosystem. eBPF programs have the capability to instrument, inspect, and interdict traffic while providing enhanced performance observability. This slide gives us an overview of use cases, and as you can see, these can be broadly classified into three main areas, networking, observability or tracing, and security. In the realm of networking solutions, the combination of programmability and efficiency makes eBPF a natural fit for all pro packet processing requirements. We have developed eBPF programs for various business use cases, such as packet tagging, traffic mirroring, traffic direction, and layer four load balancing. Similarly, we have started providing deep visibility into system and network performance. While traditional solutions rely on static counters, uh, static counters and, and gauges exposed by the operating system, eBPF enables the collection and internal aggregation of custom metrics that are generated from a wide range of sources. We are also actively pursuing the use cases of tracing and profiling that allow unprecedented visibility into the runtime behavior of applications and system itself. On the security side, eBPF allows us to combine the visibility and control from all aspects to provide functionality that operates on more context 
with better level of control. Some of the eBPA programs that we have developed allow us to export NetFlow logs and perform connection and connection rate limiting. We are also partnering with our security teams on use cases around deep packet inspection and DDoS. In today's presentation, we'd like to talk about some of the networking and security solutions that have been developed by the LEAF project. eBPF is developed and managed by a super smart and enthusiastic community that is actively working on adding new features to it. We believe that eBPF will eventually become the modern software defined networking solution of the cloud and cloud native era. There are a lot of networking and security solutions in the market that are based on eBPF. Celium and Calico are good examples of CNIs for Kubernetes. In this slide, we're going to talk about some of the eBPF based networking solutions that have been developed as a part of the LEAF project. Hopefully, these examples will showcase the potential of eBPF. I mentioned previously that eBPF provides us with a mechanism through which we can plug in our code to predefine hook points in the kernel. Here, we are using a network hook called TC, which is traffic control. All of the ingress and egress traffic um, goes through these hook points. Once we place our code at these points, it can see all the traffic and process it. For example, we can extract the information that we need and act on it, pass the data onto higher layers of stack, drop the traffic, or redirect the traffic to some other host. It can also manipulate the traffic by changing certain fields of the packet depending on the requirement. And all these are done in the kernel so it yields the best performance as we don't need to carry the packet all the way up the stack to the user space, which would then involve multiple context switches and processing resources. Let's go through the eBPF solutions then. The first one mentioned here is Flow Exporter. As enterprises start serving live traffic out of public clouds, it is increasingly important for them to export traffic flow data to security solutions that provide an advanced threat protection across the extended network and cloud. Private clouds provide traffic flow data through dedicated network appliances, which are like hardware-based solutions. However, tenants in public clouds do not enjoy a similar level of access or network visibility since the infrastructure layer is shared. We considered options to address this, such as adding a network hop to process traffic flow data. However, such a configuration increases traffic latency and also adds another layer to manage in the traffic ingress stack. Is the best solution? Leaf developed an eBPF kernel function which extracts and exports flow metadata directly from Linux-based edge proxy servers. This essentially eliminated a hop in the critical ingress path, reduced the site latency by 50 milliseconds, and also helped us save on the licensing and operational cost involved in managing the additional hop. Next is traffic mirroring. The best way to succeed in a business is by providing an amazing customer experience. At Walmart, we want to have visibility into how our customers are interacting with our site. We have a few analytics solutions that can operate on the data streams and provide the needed analysis. But these solutions need the data of interest, and that interest changes from time to time. There's an opportunity to save valuable time and money by automating the process of collecting this data. One of the most effective ways of collecting this data of interest in the public cloud is from the edge proxy servers. However, it is also a critical hub that handles all of the interest traffic to the site and is performance sensitive. We again saw the potential of using eBPF and developed a kernel function that encapsulates the filtering and mirroring functionalities together. This solution supports one or many custom filters and also allows us to capture only header data if required, thereby limiting the bandwidth utilization. Additionally, 
given that eBPF is very lightweight, highly performant and safe, this solution has been implemented at the source, which is on the edge proxy itself. This allows us to eliminate multiple hops in the traffic paths, reduce latencies, and the licensing costs of buying and maintaining third-party vendor solutions. The last one on this slide is packet tagging uh, that we use to ensure quality of service in the stores. Like I mentioned before, eBPF can not only perform read-only processing, but it can also be used to manipulate the traffic. This is one good example of packet manipulation. The bandwidth availability can be limited in stores. And so it is extremely important to use it optimally, especially in peak traffic situations like the holiday season. Since payment transactions are critical for any business, we do prioritize them over other kinds of traffic. The way we achieve this is by setting the DSCP tag on the packet so that the egress routers can see the tag and allocate dedicated bandwidth to the tagged packets. This ensures that even in the event of congestion, the payment transactions don't fail. We have a few more kernel functions here that are based on XDP, which is Express Data Path. With the advent of XDP and eBPF, it is now possible to achieve high performance packet processing in the kernel data path. XDP allows us to attach an eBPF program to a low level hook inside the kernel. This XDP hook implemented by the network driver provides a programmable layer before the Linux networking stack. This makes XDP the de facto choice for use cases wherein we must drop or redirect the traffic. Let's go through a couple of XDP based eBPF solutions that have been developed by the LEAD project. The first one is concurrency and rate limiting. As enterprises increase their digital footprint, it is vital to have safeguards put against sudden bursts of traffic or cyber attacks. Additionally, sometimes due to sudden bursts of traffic, the upstream applications can slow down due to various reasons, which in turn can cause back pressure at the edge, causing the connections to pile up and to overwhelm our edge infrastructure. Having a connection limiting and connection rate limiting feature allows us to limit the concurrent number of TCP connections and the rate at which we uh, new TCP connections are established. Adding this functionality to our edge proxies and load balancers protects our compute resources from getting overwhelmed when there is a sudden burst of traffic that is beyond what our resources are capable of handling. There's also a recent exciting offering from leads that is layer 4 load balancer. Several internet companies serve millions of requests every second out of their edge network. Since the layer 4 load balancer must process every incoming packet, the solution needs to be highly performant and also must provide the necessary flexibility and scalability required in production environments. Traditionally, layer 4 load balancers have been hardware based primarily to suit the high performance requirement. However, taking a hardware centric approach limits the system's flexibility and introduces limitations such as lack of agility, scalability, and elasticity. As applications increase in number, complexity, and importance, it is vital that the infrastructure layer is app focused and not limited by the confines of hardware configurations. All the performance needs can be met with software solutions themselves using eBPF and XTP. The LEAF project has leveraged Catron from Facebook to develop an eBPF based load balancer offering that is implemented in a hairpin model on a single NIC. One of the key features that we wanted to enable in our production environment is DSR or direct server return so that we can send responses directly to the client. This ensures that the ELB does not need to handle return packets which are typically larger in size. To implement DSR, we developed an LB agent that runs on our fleet of hypervisors. For other environment types, we run the agent on VMs, bare metals, etc., depending on the use case. The agent can run on any commodity hardware that is based on Linux. ELB is helping us replace hardware-based solutions with a modern software-based solution. 
Enabling DSR not only eliminates centralized choke points in our network, but also helps us improve the overall site latency. Since it uses XDP, it is blazing fast and it can process the traffic at near line rates, thereby helping us reduce our infrastructure footprint considerably. Both the above XDP funnel, funnel functions can be run in a chained fashion to work cooperatively with each other. This can ensure that all the illegitimate traffic is dropped by the connection and connection rate limit functions and the ELB doesn't have any undesired effects even under adverse conditions. This concludes our section on eBPF solutions. Next, we would like to walk you through our open sourcing plans. At LEAF, our vision is to create a marketplace for eBPF programs where users and developers can share their own signed eBPF programs and download eBPF programs from others. Our LEAF control plane can then be used to orchestrate and compose selected eBPF programs from the marketplace to several business needs. In this way, LEAF provides developers with a cloud and vendor agnostic platform for adding capabilities to the operating system at runtime. We believe that the creation of such a fully integrated software ecosystem around eBPF will unleash its full potential for community adoption. A vital prerequisite to the kernel function marketplace is the open sourcing of the LEAF project, which has been a top priority for Walmart and our team. I am glad that we are open sourcing the project today and would like to thank the Linux Foundation team for helping us through every step. We would like to encourage everyone here to adopt and contribute to the LEAF project. In the next section, Brian will walk us through a demo on how we can set up our dev environment and start using LEAF. Thanks, Karan. Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Merrill, and I'm a software engineer on the LEAF team. And I'm excited to be giving you a demonstration of LEAF today. Before we actually drop into a terminal and start running commands, I want to give you a quick preview so that you have some context going into this demonstration. So if you look at this slide, there's two main boxes. On the right-hand side is our virtual machine on which we'll be running LEAF. This virtual machine is all set up and configured using Vagrant Automation, which is checked into our open source repository. So you can grab this automation and within just a few minutes, be running the same commands and things that I'll be showing you today. It's a very easy, quick way to get your feet wet with LEAF and give it a try. So on this virtual machine, we're running a couple of Go-based web servers where we can send test traffic. We're hosting a kernel function repository. This is where LEAF can download the eBPF programs that it's going to manage and execute. Then we're also running Prometheus and Grafana to show some of the metrics that LEAF provides for the eBPF programs that it's running. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, we see our host. From our host, where we'll be able to access all of these services on the virtual machine via some ports that we've configured. So let's go ahead and go to our terminal and start running some commands. So, like I said, there's some ports configured on the host machine. We're showing those here. Those are our Go HTTP web servers. Uh, that we can access to send ch test traffic to. We have our Prometheus, our Grafana um, port, Prometheus, and we have a couple of LEAF ports that we're able to um, run and access APIs on. And then this is showing our LEAF code on the host, which is mounted onto the virtual machine. So we could actually make code updates to LEAFD and quickly test them out on the virtual machine if we wanted to. So to keep things consistent with our slides, the slide that I was just showing, I'm going to keep our host commands running on the left-hand side of the machine, the screen, and our virtual machine commands running on the right-hand side of the screen. And then you can see which window pane is active because it'll be the black one. And hopefully that'll help you follow along as I move between some of these window panes. So onto our virtual machine, you can see that we've already built 
a leaf binary, a leaf D binary. Let's go ahead and run leaf D. For that, we need to be root because it's going to be doing some privileged things and running, uh, loading these eBPF programs into the kernel. We need to provide it a configuration file. This configuration file doesn't tell it which eBPF programs to run or how to run them. This is just an initialization configuration uh, telling it which ports to use, how to log, where to store metrics, things like that. Let's go ahead and start leaf D. Okay, leaf D is up and running, but it's not yet running any eBPF programs, but it's ready to, to be configured to do so. So before we actually start some eBPF programs, let's run some traffic against those test web servers or one and see what the results are. So I'm gonna run Hey, which is just a nice, easy program for, run, for creating HTTP load. Let's run 200 requests with 20 concurrent workers. And let's run them to, we'll just pick one of these web servers. Okay, and you see that we got those, all of those responses back very quickly. It only took 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, most of them came in uh, within that time and they were all 200 okay responses. So that looks good. Let's say we're in a scenario where we really wanna slow down this traffic. Let's see how we could do that with Leaf. So we have a payload here. And this is a payload that we can send to our Leaf configuration API. In this payload, we search by sequence ID. We'll see that there's two eBPF programs in this payload. One is a rate limiting program and one is a connection limiting program. Then we have various arguments and things we can send to them. Some neat things we could change are which ports that we want these two, uh, these eBPF programs to, to monitor and uh, the, the, the actual rate limit and connection, max connection value. And these can all be changed on the fly, which is really great. So now that we've seen the payload, let's actually send that into Leaf. You can see we can do this just with a simple HTTP post uh, in our test environment. So let's run that. And in the top right, you should see Leaf D, the Leaf D log load the, this configuration and start these eBPF programs. So we can see it doing that now, and we got a successful response back. To verify that it's actually running the programs we expect, we can look at the Leaf Debug API or the NIC that's configured on the virtual machine. So if we run this, we'll see now Leaf is running with our connection limiting eBPF program and our our rate limiting eBPF program. So now we should really be slowing down this traffic. Let's rerun our hey command, the same hey, com hey command we ran before and see if we've made a difference. You can already see that it's taking longer. In fact, it's gonna be taking much longer. We're really gonna slow this traffic down. So let's take advantage of this time to kind of take a deeper dive look into the, some, some of the things that Leaf is doing under the covers for those that are interested. So as root, we can run a BPF tool, which is a core BPF program. It's not real. It's not a Leaf program. It's provided by the kernel team, I believe. And we can show which programs are running. So you can see our XDP programs are running here. We can also show some of the maps that are running. And Leaf uses these maps to do all kinds of things. It's where we, it provides the configured uh, metrics. It's where we provide the configuration values. It has, these maps are uh, how, e how Leaf is able to chain together programs but be able to reorder them or add and remove them without having to remove the base 
eBPF program from the network interface. There's lots of things that are going on here under the covers that we don't have time to cover right now, but might be interesting for you to dig around in uh, on, your, uh, on your own. So our hay program finished. You can see it took much longer, it took about 60 seconds. So we really slowed that traffic down. And LEAF provides metrics into what those eBPF programs were doing. So let's take a look at that using a browser and logging into Grafana. I'm gonna skip creating a new password. And then I can look at the pre-configured dashboards that are part of our Vagrant automation that are already populated here. So the first program that runs in that chain is our rate limiting program. It was sequence ID one. So let's take a look at it and see what it saw. You can see that it saw a big sharp increase in the number of connections received. And you can see that we actually, it actually started dropping some of these connections. So any of the, of the requests that got past rate limiting would go on to the next program in the chain, which would be our connection limiting program, which limits the max number of connections that can be alive at one time. So let's look at what it saw. Again, it saw a sharp increase in connections, and even it was dropping some of those connections that it saw. So it went through two layers of aggressive limiting, and that's why we saw that, that time for our requests increase so much. These are this is this was an extreme case to show sharp increases and in, in dropping the traffic. But these programs are all configurable to fit your your business needs and requirements. So that concludes our demonstration. Let's hop jump back to the slides. We want to give a thank you. The whole the entire Leaf team would like to say thanks to all those that have been involved in our journey thus far to get Leaf to the point where it is and running in production at Walmart and doing some great things. We're excited that it's now open source and hope to have many, many more collaborators and contributors in the future. We have an exciting roadmap planned ahead for Leaf and lots of things that we'd like to do. So if you're interested in getting involved, we would love to have you, and we're excited to answer any questions you might have about LEAF. Uh, we also just want to say thanks to the open source community in general for providing uh, eBPF and answering our questions and helping us get to the point where we are. Thanks very much, and have a good day.